Today we'll be breaking down a clip from Internet Anarchist using Premiere Pro, After Effects and Photoshop. This is taken from his D-Nuts video, I'll play the clip now. The iconic D-Nuts meme, his meteoric rise to fame, and the one decision that ruined his life. First we use the polygonal lasso tool on Photoshop to cut the image and apply a surface blur filter. You can also adjust brightness and contrast, then export this layer as a PNG. Then replace both this image and the original D-Nuts clip with After Effects composition. Download the free video Copilot Saber plugin and install it. Restart After Effects. Then search for Saber under Effects and add it to a new solid layer. Then go to Image Layer, select Layer, then Auto Trace, then Alpha. Find the mask and copy it onto the solid layer. Then under the Saber Effects panel, change Customize Core Type to Layer Mask. Then you can play around with the different presets and glow settings. For this one we can select Fuel and change the composite settings under Render Settings to Transparent. This helps remove the black colour around the glow. Then pre-compose these layers and next you can add a Turbulent Displace effect and keyframe the evolution to animate it. Then we can make the animation appear from bottom using keyframes. Switch to graph view and create a steep ramp curve. Now we save and go back to Premiere Pro. Then we find footage of a stock market graph on YouTube. I managed to find the exact same clip Internet Anarchist used. You can play around with colors on the Lumetri color panel but it's not too important for this tutorial. Next we'll add a glitch transition onto an adjustment layer. I actually asked him which one he used here but he couldn't remember as it was from a pack. It doesn't have to be identical. The key lesson here is don't waste time creating these from scratch unless you really want to. Search around online for some free glitch presets, there's plenty of them available. There's even a lot of YouTubers who offer them for free. Depending on what packs you get you can add it directly onto the clips, two adjustment layers or even one adjustment layer if the preset allows it. I recommend using adjustment layers so you can practice and tweak things around without messing up the original clip. Next jump into After Effects and we can quickly create the 2D image saber effect using the same method as the first one. This time we'll use a red colour and proton preset. Then you can create a new dark purple solid layer and add the grid effect to it. Play around with the settings, you can change the grid colour to pink and blending mode to screen. You can also add a slight blur to this layer if the image is too sharp and this will give it a slight out of focus background look. Next we'll create a text layer and animate it using a preset from the animation composer panel. Pick one that you like and right click then add to layer as in. You can change the size and spacing of each line in the paragraph and character panels. Do this until you're happy with it. Next we'll add a grid effect to the text layer and change some of the properties like size, border, colour, opacity and blending mode. Then we create a black solid layer and add both fractal noise and wave warp effects. For noise setting we'll use basic and block for type and play around with the other settings. For wave warp we can change the height and width and create a stretch wave effect. To animate the fractal noise effect go to evolution options, hold down alt and select the random seed stopwatch and enter the expression time times 4. And this will create a random glitch map animation. Then we can pre-compose this layer and hide it. Next add an adjustment layer and drag the displacement map effect onto it and set the map layer to the pre-composed layer we just created. Then we add some horizontal displacement keyframes and copy them, then reposition them to create a similar displacement effect over the text. Then we can pre-compose all these layers and label it text animation. Then for good measure we add a black solid layer to go behind everything since the grid has a bit of transparency from the screen blending mode. Next we want to scale down these layers a little bit and make it smaller than the original. This ensures we don't accidentally crop the borders too much when we go back into Premiere Pro. Now we can scale up the After Effects composition position in Premiere Pro so it's big and center. Then we add position keyframing to make the composition slowly move up, gaining speed and then slowing down again. So you'll want to make a slightly to the left curve like this. Then we line it up on the timeline and create a similar bottom to top position transition for the stock graph footage. This time with a regular curve and we want this transition to start just after the After Effects composition so it looks more organic and like it's being nudged out of the way. Then we add an adjustment layer and play around with the vignette setting under the Lumetri color effect or panel. I recommend having this panel saved in your workspace as it's very useful for quick colour corrections. Then we play the final clip. It's not perfectly identical but I think it turned out okay considering I didn't have access to the exact images and presets that he used. Thanks for watching, see you next time.